So next, we're going to talk about vowels. So consonants and vowels, two very different things for linguists. That's why linguists have to use a different set of criteria when we're describing vowel sounds. Because remember, the difference between vowels and consonants is that with vowels, there is no constriction of the airflow. So because of that, we can't rely on landmarks like place of articulation. Uh, voicing is not really an issue because, um, well, all the vowels in English anyway are voiced. Unless we're whispering, but let's ignore that for now. And then uh, manner of articulation, that doesn't really matter either because there is no constriction of the airflow. So there's two general types of vowel sounds. There's monophthongs and there are diphthongs. You've probably heard of diphthongs before, before but not monophthongs. Monophthongs just mean one vowel quality, whereas diphthongs mean two vowel qualities. It starts at one vowel and it finishes at another vowel quality. So how do we describe vowels? We're only going to talk about monophthongs, how to describe monophthong vowels. Because when you describe diphthong vowels, it's a little bit more complicated and it's more than we can cover in this video. But for monophthong vowels, there's three criteria that we use. So we have height, backness, and roundedness. There's another category that linguists often use called tenseness, but we won't be covering that in this video. So, the three criteria we're using to describe vowels, height, backness, and roundedness. So height has to do with how high the tongue is in the, in the mouth. So this is really tough for vowels to figure out what your tongue is doing compared to consonants because, again, we don't have a landmark that the tongue is touching up against. So you have to just get some practice with working with vowels and figure out exactly where your tongue is in the vocal tract. But anyway, let's, uh, let's take an example. So there's basically three categories here for height. We have high vowels, we have mid vowels, and we have low vowels. So sometimes vowels are talked about as mid-high or mid-low. Let's just talk about the difference between high vowels and low vowels right now because that'll give you a sense of just what your tongue is doing when you're producing vowel sounds. So first, if you pronounce this sound, e, e, hopefully you're alone maybe watching this in your dorm room or your room so it isn't too embarrassing, but go e, but then go ah, ah. Now do both of them, e, ah, e, ah. You should feel that your tongue is going up and down when you're producing those two sounds in succession. That's why we call e a high vowel and ah a low vowel. So the second criterion that linguists use when describing vowels is backness. So there's three general categories for describing where or how far front or back a tongue is when it's producing a vowel. It's front, central, or back. Again, let's take a couple of examples of front vowels versus back vowels so you can feel the distinction, hopefully. So let's take E again. E, now we already talked, already talked about that's a high vowel, but it's also a front vowel. E, but now say oo, and then say E, oo, E, oo. You should be noticing your tongue going front and back in your mouth. E, is a high front vowel, and ooh, it's a high vowel, but it's a high back vowel. So the third is probably the easiest of all, roundedness. It just has to do with whether or not the lips are rounded when you're producing a sound. So there's only two categories. We have rounded and unrounded. So an example of a rounded vowel, you've just done, ooh. In the International Phonetic Alphabet, it's actually written with a letter U. We'll come to that in a moment. Ooh, ooh. You can see that, right? You can see it very, very clearly in a speaker's lips. They have to round them to produce that vowel. What about an unrounded vowel? You've also just produced one of those, the E sound. That's written with a lowercase i in the International Phonetic Alphabet. E, E. There's no rounding of the lips when you're producing that vowel. So, just like with consonants, there's a specific order that linguists use when they're talking about vowel sounds. They always talk about vowel sounds in this order. It's height, then the backness, and then the roundedness. So, for example, E is, can you guess? 
Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure it out. It is a high front unrounded vowel. But let's take this vowel for example. Ah, as in ash. That is a low front unrounded vowel. So it's always in this order that linguists will talk about vowel sounds. And again, remember, these are all monophthong vowels. If we want to talk about diphthong vowels, then we first have to talk about the starting vowel quality and then the ending vowel quality. But we're not going to worry about that in this video. So when linguists are talking about consonants, they talk about it through the International Phonetic Alphabet. And this is basically the chart, but it's only for the sounds of English. If you're looking for the complete chart for the International Phonetic Alphabet, it looks something like this. It's way bigger, it's way more complete, and it's also a lot more intimidating. It's not something that we have to worry about in this video. So just to kind of show you how to navigate the International Phonetic Alphabet, which is really important when you're doing transcription, on the left over here, from stops, fricatives, affricates, nasals, liquids, glides, and tap, which we'll talk about in a second, these are all manners of articulation. How is the sound produced in the vocal tract? And across we have bilabial, labiodental, dental, alveolar, palatal, velar, and glottal. These are all places of articulation. Where in the vocal tract is the sound, uh, the airflow being constricted? And then we have voicing. Remember, all sounds that are consonants are either voiced or voiceless. Voiceless ones are indicated on the left side of each one of these columns with minus V, and the voiced sounds are indicated with plus V. Okay, so just to kind of sound these out, there's a lot of uh, links that I'll provide that you will give you to, uh, bring you to a site on the internet where you can interact with the Inter International Phonetic Alphabet. Click on them to hear what they sound like. But let's go through these so you can hear what they sound like. So this is p, b, t, d, k, g. And this one, you can't hear in isolation. You can only hear it in between sounds, like things like um, uh-oh, Batman, Hawaii. It's a little catch in the throat. Next, we have our fricative sounds. V, v, s, z, sh, z. Next, we have our affricates, and there's only two that we use in English. Ch. J. Then we have our nasal sounds, so this is m, mm, n, mm, m. Mm. Then we have our liquids, we have u and er. I want to draw your attention to this sound because in many textbooks, this sound is actually written with an upside, uh, a right side up r. And I want to encourage you to use the upside down r because that is the er sound of American English. So this sound actually is a different sound in the International Phonetic Alphabet. I'll let you look that up on your own to figure out what it is. Then we have our glides, starting with w, w, and y, y. That's also something to draw your attention to because you see, why is that written with a J but it represents the y sound? It's because this sound in the International Phonetic Alphabet also represents a different sound. I'll let you look it up on your own to figure out what it sounds like. Another thing I want to draw your attention to is the tap sound. The tap sound is maybe not necessarily represented in the chart that you've seen in a book somewhere, but I want to bring it up here because it happens a lot in English. So anytime a sound is represented with two T's or two D's, it's very often pronounced with a tap sound, a rapid flick of the tongue to a place of articulation. Here, it's an alveolar tap as in words like butter, ladder, writer. In all of those sounds, if you were to actually say substitute a t sound, you'd be maybe saying something like butter, which is maybe more of a British pronunciation of that in a formal context. But in American English, it's more like butter. It's not d, which would be sounding like butter. It's butter. It's a very quick movement of the tongue. And so we want to call that uh, a different manner of articulation. It's called a tap or a flap. So this is the chart of consonants for English. All right, so we have our vowel chart up here. So just like we talked about uh, how consonants are described, 
Let's go again and talk about how vowels are described. So here we have high, mid, and low corresponding to the height of the vowel. Then we have front, central, and back corresponding to the backness of the vowel. And then roundedness is indicated here. In this box are the vowels that are rounded. And these are only the vowels that are used in American English. There are many more vowels that are represented among the languages of the world, but we're only talking about the vowels used in English for this video. Another thing you might notice is that these sounds are sort of asymmetrically distributed in this space. Why is it sort of diagonal like this? There is a good reason for that. Actually, this is a pretty faithful representation of your vowel space in your vocal tract. So what this means is that there is more space front to back high up in your mouth than there is front to back low in your mouth where everything's sort of bunched up down here near the tongue and the tongue root. Okay, so everything from this line up is talking about monophthongs, that is one vowel quality. Whereas everything below is talking about diphthongs. These are two vowel qualities. It starts out at one vowel and then it finishes at another. So, let's just sound out each of these monophthongs. There's a lot of websites out there where you can actually hear what these sound like, but these are pretty quick. We could do them here. So this is E, 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 A, A. And you should be able to feel your tongue getting lower and lower in your mouth as you're producing those sounds. This is U, U, O, O. Ah. This sound and this sound are very similar, but they are not the same. So this is ah, and this is ah. Similar, but not the same. And these two sounds in the center, sort of mid-central vowels, are also very similar. The first one here on top, written with the schwa, um, it's, it's unstressed. That's why linguists always joke about people want to hang out with this vowel, because it is never stressed. So it's like an oven. This is the second sound in oven, or second syllable in oven, and this is the first, uh, oven. All right, so down here we have diphthongs that are in American English, and we really just have five of them. So we have a, i, ow, o, oi. So they start out at one vowel, but they finish at another, just like a starts out at e, and then it finishes at i for A, like in face. This one starts out at A and it finishes in I. So you get this diphthong in sounds like I or lie. This diphthong, ow, moves up here as in house. Starts out at A and then it finishes at U, ow. This is O as in row, row, row your boat. So O starts out at this vowel and then it finishes at this vowel. O. And then the last one we have is OI. And that's like in choice or boy. So it starts out here and it finishes here. Diphthongs, monophthongs.